In this episode, we're going to take a landscape photo straight into the sun. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs and welcome to episode 61 of my photography, Lightroom and Photoshop tips. My name is Serge Amélie, I'm a French photographer who is usually in Paris and right now I'm in villefranche chemer in the French VR, one of my favorite places in France with amazing views as you can see here. And um, I'm going to show you a technique that I love to do, which is to do some uh, manual bracketing to shoot straight into the sun. I mean by hand, no, not using any tripod because, you know, it, there's a lot of light. The sun is coming on straight to me. What I do is I'm going to I program my 5D Mark II for bracketing. It's going to go minus 2, 0 and plus 2 exposure. But it's going to do it on automatic and then I put my timer on 2 seconds timer what, and then what happens is that all I have to do is frame my shot and uh, I press the shutter speed and it's going to take three shots underexposed normal and overexposed and then I play around with it in Lightroom and Photoshop to get the best out of this scene so I'm going to try to take a couple of more photos and we we'll see which one works the best okay guys so we're back in front of Lightroom 5 with uh, uh, with two raw files I showed you in the introduction video that I was bracketing, so that means I was taking three exposures. But for the final result, I'm only going to use two photos. One is the normal exposure, and the other one is the underexposure. Why? Because the only thing I'm trying to solve here is just to get the sun, you know, um, yeah, get a bit more details in the sun. You will see what I mean in a second. Let's start off with the first photo. So. I'm, what I'm going to show you is pretty similar to what I showed you from a couple of weeks ago from this uh, photo of Tech and Cassis. But this time I'm going to show you the whole way till the end. I'm not going to keep any secrets from you, which is amazing. Well, I hope so, at least. Anyways, let's get cooking. Okay, so I'm going to open the shadows as usual, which is going to make anything dark uh, coming out. Now, one of the questions that uh, people ask me is, yeah, but when I open up my shadows, I get lots of noise. So you have to watch for that. Now, I'm using a 5D Mark II at 100 ISO on a tripod, as you can see here. So, um, yeah, 100 ISO. So there's not so much noise, but uh, yeah, it's not so much noise, even with the shadows at plus 100. So then I bring down the highlights, but this time, yeah, I'm going to bring in them the whole way. And then I'm going to do my whites and blacks, holding on the Option key or the Alt key. Now the white, I'm going to go to the right until I see the whole sun becoming white. That means this is burned completely and I'm going to back it down. Okay, but that's not going to be enough because it's still like a big blur, but it's not really nice. And the blacks, well, I'm going to go the whole way. I really want some blacks there. So I'm going to go like really far, like minus 64 or something. Yeah, make it really dense. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, I think the, now the colors, I'm going to go for a more sunset look. So you know the drill. For that, I'm going to go to the white balance and go to shade. And then I'm going to add some yellows and I'm going to add some reds. Well, maybe it's not as much. You have to find the right value. I think the white balance does a lot for this type of photo. Okay. Um, now, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to make the sky a bit darker so that it blends better. But you will see, uh, you see, if I take my exposure the whole way down, you see, this is completely burned. There's like no details there, even if I back it down a lot. So let me double click to put it back. But anyways, I still want a gradient in the sky. So I'm going to take this gradient tool and I'm going to make a minus exposure and bring it down just a little bit. Okay. And uh, let's go into the noise reduction. I'm going to unable the profile correction, which is going to take any vignetting off. I'm going to remove chromatic aberration. That could be important because chromatic aberration sometimes happens when you're shooting straight into the sun. Uh, well, I don't see much there, but anyway, it's good. It's good to be done that way. And then I'm going to, what I'm going to do is um, take care of the noise. Let's zoom in at 100% into the shadows and move the right slider until there's not much noise anymore in the trees. So 13 is not enough. So I'm going to go to about 20. That should be fine. 20. Uh, usually I, always always put the color noise around 50 because yeah i just want to make sure there's really like no color noise color noise is little you know black uh, sorry red green spots in the dark areas okay now you know um when i put my luminance noise reduction at 20 
when I took that much noise out, then I put my sharpening at 100 minus the noise reduction. So it's gonna be it's gonna be 80 in this case, just to make the image sharper. Now that's just the beginning. That is my basic row sharpening. Sometime, and you can see that in some of my past episodes, I will do more sharpening depending if it goes on the web or if I print. You can check. There's a couple an episode on that a couple of weeks ago, or maybe no, sorry, like a few weeks back. Anyways. So sharpening and then the masking. That's very important because I don't like to have grainy skies. Look at the sky. Is it a bit grainy? I don't think you can tell on the video, but I always make sure the sky is not being sharpened. For this, you press the Option key or the Alt key. You go to the right until the sky is black. And anything which is black is not going to get sharpened. So we have a nice smooth sky. Okay. So that's uh, uh, the basic idea. Sometime I checked what a camera landscape looks like on sunny photos. Oh, it's kind of cool. It makes it a bit reddish. There's more red than the, so I'm gonna go for that. Okay, now once I've retouched the first one, let me lower a bit the exposure overall. I'm gonna select both photos, click on sync. And uh, basically I want to, um, I want to. I don't want to sync the basic tones. I, I only want to sync the white balance, uh, tone curve clarity, sharpening. Yes, I want uh, color. Yeah, this one I haven't touched yet. Split toning I haven't touched. Local adjustment I haven't touched. Noise reduction and white balance. Lens correction. Yes. Well, the rest I haven't done really much. Spot removal. I haven't done much there. So really, what I want to go on the next photo is the white balance, the sharpening. Uh, the noise reduction and lens correction. Okay, so let's do that and see what happens. So let's go on the next one. So that's the underexposed photo. You see the sky has more details there. You know, I can maybe lower it down a little bit. Now, I don't care about the bottom of the photo. I'm just looking at the top of the photo. I just want a bit more details. I mean, I know it's kind of stupid to just have one photo, but you know, for me, you know, having a big white circle like this, you know, completely burned ruins the photo. Having something more subtle like this, it's kind of better, right? So then I'm gonna uh, right click, edit, open as layers in Photoshop. And the only thing I'm gonna do in Photoshop is get the sun from the underexposed photo to go over the over uh, the normal exposed. So let me press on pause until we are ready to rock and roll. Here we are, as I right click and choose edit as layers, you can see that I have my two files. The top one is a normal exposure. And if I turn this one off, you can see the one below, which is the underexposed. So all I want is to get back uh, the, um, the sun from the underexposed. For this, I'm gonna create a mask, which is white right now. When it's white, anything which is on that layer is gonna appear. And then I'm gonna take my gradient tool, which is here, okay? And it goes from black to transparent. And uh, what I want is I want to mask the, the sky. So I'm gonna click on the mask and just click here and drag and it's going to create a gradient as you can see here uh, that goes from black to white okay now i'll show you a little trick which is funny once you've got the gradient done you see uh, if i t if i disable the mask um sorry if i disable the layer mask you can see uh the before and after with the mask we just got some more details in the sun but you see here it's a bit too dark down there. So sometimes what you can do is you just can click on the mask here and you press Command L for Mac or Control L for Windows and that opens the levels. Now I'm not going to go into what the levels does but all I'm going to tell you is that if you move that side to the right your gradient here is going to go lower. Check this out. To the right it's going to go lower so it makes this part darker and if you go down to the left it's going to go higher. Okay so you just find a value that makes it a bit more natural. Something like that can be cool. Um, let's see before, after. Well, it didn't change much. I can then you can. What what I usually do is I go to the properties windows. Make sure it's open by clicking Windows and Properties. And when you're on a mask, you have this ability to change the density of the mask. Basically, this is uh, black. Black is saying, okay, anything that is at this position on that layer is gonna be not visible and we're gonna show through what is under that, which is the you know the darker photo. Now, if I lower the density, the layer you'll see is becoming more gray and it's gonna blend them a bit better together. 
it's gonna make yeah a bit bust of both world but check it out Th before so we had a big wide thing and now it's a bit more subtle okay um, okay maybe I'm gonna get density a bit more like this okay so I'm happy with that I have blended both exposure I'm gonna select both press command E and merge both into one layer okay now while I'm in Photoshop I'm gonna a couple more corrections so I'm gonna duplicate the layer and I want to take care you see of this lens flare which is here so I'm gonna take the um, the uh, stem tool by pressing S which is here the stem tool and I'm gonna press the um, the option key click here for example on this on this water and make sure it matches there a little bit and I'm gonna go down now I've copied the boat a little bit but that's fine I'll correct that a bit later and I'm just yeah I'm just making little strikes like this and just trying to take out um, what was there before now you see now I, I duplicated the boat so for this I can just click I could just make this a bit smaller and click here and take that out and take that out. Now you can see, we can see the strikes that I've done. So what you can do is make just a bigger brush and click here and just now restamp here. All right. And maybe uh, restamp there just to make sure there's like, there's no pattern there, but check it out before and after it's, you can tell something happened there, but then as we're going to do dodge and burn on the top of it, you're not going to see much. Okay, while I'm at it, I might as well take this out. So make this smaller. And uh, yeah, no, I'm gonna, I don't want to copy that boat. You know what? I can use another tool for that, which, which should work, which is the spot hitting brush tool. Let's check it out. I just paint over it. See, yeah, it takes it out. Perfect. Okay, so I just took a couple of things off. Oh, there's a little sensor spot here. I'm going to, I could do it in Lightroom, but when I'm in Photoshop, I do it. So all I did was take out the lens flare and um, take out the, um, and, and merge both exposure. So I'm gonna to go to File, uh, Close, Save, and that's gonna save it and put it, back, uh, put it back in Lightroom. So let me put on pause, cause it's, gonna, it's a big file. And let's go back to Lightroom with this saved. Oh, actually pretty fast. Here we are. So that's both versions. So now that's just a starting point. I'm gonna keep on doing some retouching in Lightroom. First, I wanna do like um, some tailor-made uh, vignetting. For this, I'm gonna take this gradient tool and uh, I wanna darken this part here. So I'm gonna make a gradient and just lower the exposure, something like that. I think it's kind of interesting to make you see, I don't have to make like a, a vignetting which where everything is dark around. I can do my own. I can do another one here. Uh, Sometimes I like to do that. You know, it's just I focus whatever I want the attention to be on. I can do one on, on the on the on the top here also. Maybe not that much. It's different gradients, you know, and it gives me, like I do my own vignetting with that. That's something I like to do sometimes. So that's before and after. Also, it masks a bit what I've done here with the stem tool. You see here, you can sort of see it, but there is wave in the water. I mean, anybody seeing this picture for the first time will never guess that uh, I took something out there, never. Okay, so now, uh, once I've done that, let's do some dodge and burning. Dodge and burning, so first, I'm gonna take a brush and make this very strong. Uh, not very strong, but a bit stronger. And I wanna make this water a bit more white, you know, put more attention here on the waves. I think it's kinda cool. Okay. That's kind of cool. Then new, I want to make another brush. I like this old part of the CT. Just make this one a bit more visible. All right. Maybe a bit more, not that much. Maybe add a bit of clarity there. Yeah. For that brush. So that makes that village pop. Then a new brush. Okay. Make the exposure bigger. And then now I want to brighten up this part of the water. Okay. And this part of the water. All right. Let's just use to make the... I'm complexing thing, you know, I'm making the light more complex. So I think the photo is getting a bit more interesting. That's my theory on life. Okay, next, new, another brush. I wanna enhance the highlights in the trees. Uh, make them a bit more there. Just make some more interesting lights. So check it out, before the brush stroke, after the brush stroke, you know, trying to make the image a bit more interesting. Uh, I think I'm gonna add one more brush stroke here. It's a bit too dark. 
just gonna add a bit one more brush stroke here uh yeah i don't know just whenever i retouch a photo uh, you know i just change uh of point of view every time you know it's just like i try new things every time but i just want to show you it just give you some inspiration for some ideas maybe add a bit of light here also i think that my vignetting is a bit too strong i don't know but you know the best when you retouch a photo so let me get the gradient back and click here and maybe turn this down you know i just changed my mind a little bit that's okay you can change your mind as much as you want. Okay, last but not least, I want to show you a little trick, which I love to do. It's a little recipe secret. And uh, I, see, I feel that the colors of this photo is a bit missing something. So you know what? I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go into, the, um, into this one, the split toning. Split toning is basically saying, okay, uh, the first, the, the, you first click here, and I'm going to take a very warm color, like red or some something very wrong, and I'm I'm just saying that this color is going to the highlights. Now I can back down the saturation of that color or back it up, but this call this only affects the highlights, meaning anything which is bright. So I'm going to keep it there, and uh, on this one I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to go into the blues. And I'm going to add some blue into the shadows. So I'm adding cold in the shadows, and I'm going. To, I'm ha I'm adding warm in the highlights. Now, of course, it's too much, so I'm going to back it down a little bit. But but it's just you know check it out before the split toning, after the split toning, it just adds some kind of quality or some vintage look to the photo. Uh, you can change. I mean, you can try. I uh, try different things. Go to warmer, a bit greener. You know. Uh, you can change, you can try anything you want. And uh, yeah, I think it's kind of cool. I don't know, it just makes that extra pop, you know, maybe a bit less saturated, you know, again, before to speak toning, after. Just give different colors to the photo. I really like that, you know. And uh, okay, last but not least, I think I'm gonna add a bit of contrast to overall, and maybe a bit more saturation, a bit more vibrance. Okay, and that's and that's the sunset on Villefranche Mer. That's uh, so I came the whole way from that photo. Let me show you the before. Let me reset it. That's the original photo, and that's the final result. Uh, a lot of special effects, you know. I mean, if you find it's too much, you can just back down the vibrance, make it, you know, like let's. Yeah, you know, it could be nice, like less saturated, you know. And you know, whenever I retouch something, I always, you know, take a break, go do something, eat something, and come back and look at it. And sometimes it goes, oh, I went too far. It's, it's in the process, when you're in the flow, it's kind of hard to see. Sometimes it's good to take a break, but you know, I kind of like the look that it has. And uh, I like the sun, and uh, I like shooting straight into the sun. I think it makes interesting photos. And I think this one is an interesting photo. So, before I leave you, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to show you something. If you go to my website, photosearch.com, and if you like Lightroom 5, well, um, I have a new bundle that came out, which is called the Lightroom 5 full training and my full workflow from shoot to retouch. What that is, is basically a five hours course on, on, on Lightroom with everything from importing to slideshows to retouching with all the raw files. It's my most complete course on Lightroom 5. And then you have my workflow, which is basically really how I work on a day-to-day -day basis with different projects. You can, check, you can click here on the individual workflow here more info if you want to see a video that shows you exactly what it does but anyway it's it's one of my best sellers these days i just want to show you that it's there it's uh so in all it's about eight hours of video and about 30 raw files that you're buying for 107 dollars and um yeah it's really my most advanced and preferred training so far so i wanted you to know that also if you follow this podcast and if you want to get the raw file of this podcast and of the past episode all you have to do is sign up for free goodies. You click here, you give me your address email, and then you receive a mail. In, in that mail, there is a link to a confidential page. That page has got all the raw files and presets of the last 20 episodes, and we are trying to put more and more every day. So that's just for people that are receiving my newsletter so I can send them some news weekly. Thank you very much, and let's get back to the studio. Okay, so I hope you like the final result. I love to do this type of photo, especially when you have the sun straight into the camera. I hope you do check out my Lightroom 5 and Workflow Bundle, which is really my best seller and really my best courses. Thank you very much for being there every week, guys, and I'll see you next week.